Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next topic of our discussion is cholangiocarcinoma. So cholangiocarcinoma is malignant neoplastic proliferation of bile duct epithelial cells. So in this case, the epithelium lining the bile duct becomes neoplastic and forms a carcinoma which is known as cholangiocarcinoma. So cholangiocarcinoma is second most hepatic malignancy after hepatocellular carcinoma itself. So cholangiocarcinoma is more prevalent in the endemic areas of liver fluke infections such as Southeast Asia, the countries like Thailand. Primary sclerosing cholangitis also results in chronic inflammation, hence predisposing to cholangiocarcinoma. Hepatolithiasis means formation of stones within the intrahepatic bile ducts. This also results in the inflammation of intrahepatic bile ducts, hence predisposing to cholangiocarcinoma. Hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus infections also increase the risk of hepatocellular as well as cholangiocarcinoma. Likewise, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease also increases the risk of hepatocellular and cholangiocarcinoma. So like all the carcinomas, cholangiocarcinoma is also driven by the mutations in tumor suppressor genes and proto-oncogenes. So tumor suppressor genes are those genes which inhibit the excessive cell growth hence act as the check against unnecessary cell division. So in this case there is loss of function mutation which means the genes fail to perform its normal function. Hence there is a loss of inhibition on cell growth. As a result there is excessive cell growth and cell proliferation. Moreover the proto-oncogenes are those genes which upregulate the cell division and cell proliferation. So in this case the mutation is gain of function mutation which means the mutation is resulting in an multifold increased function of these genes hence resulting in an upregulation of cell growth. So the mutations in tuber suppressor gene as well as proto-oncogenes results in increased cell growth and cell proliferation resulting in formation of a tumor known as cholangiocarcinoma. So cholangiocarcinoma is formed within the bile ducts. These bile ducts are either intrahepatic or they may be extrahepatic. The tumors can be formed within the intrahepatic bile ducts as you can see here. This is an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. This is the tumor that is formed in the junction of right and left hepatic ducts. Moreover, tumor is also formed in the distal portion of bile duct. This is the bile duct. And this is a tumor formed in the distal bile duct. This distal bile duct lies just behind the first part of the duodenum. So the intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma constitutes almost 10% of all cholangiocarcinomas and the extrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas constitute almost 90% of all the tumors of bile duct. The most common site of the tumor formation is at the junction of right and left hepatic ducts. As you can see here, this is the tumor formed at the junction of right and left hepatic duct. These tumors are formed in the perihilar region and they are also known as flat skin tumors. These tumors constitute almost 50 to 60 percent of all cholangiocarcinoma, whereas the distal region of the bile duct constitutes almost 20 to 30 percent cases of all cholangiocarcinoma. The gross picture of cholangiocarcinoma re reveals a grayish nodular structure which can either be protruding in the lumen of bile duct or it may form an infiltrative lesion in the bile duct. On the histological picture, all the cholangiocarcinoma are typically adenocarcinoma. Adeno means gland-like and carcinoma means malignant proliferation of the epithelial cells. These tumors may form papillary tubular, polypoid or infiltrative growth. Papillary growth means forming a finger-like structure which protrudes into the lumen. Tubular means forming a tube-like structure and polypoid means forming polyps or it may form an infiltrative growth. Infiltrative growth means the tumor spreads into the wall and does not protrude into the lumen. 
as you can see here this is a gland like proliferation and these are the malignant cells this is a tubular structure formed by the neoplastic cells the intrahepatic tumors often grow along the bile duct forming a branching tumor which is contained within the ductal lumen the neoplastic cells are cuboidal cells which range from moderately to well differentiated cells well differentiated means that these cells resemble the cuboidal cells lining the bile duct in certain cases mixed variants with the hepatocellular carcinoma also exist which means cholangioadenocarcinoma and hepatocellular carcinoma coexist the coexistence could be either separate in which case there is a separate mass of hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangioadenocarcinoma or it may form a collision which means that hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangiocarcinoma are mingled at the borders only and they are identifiable at the interface the third variation is of the mixed tumors in mixed tumors hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangioadenocarcinoma coexist these cells are diffusely mixed with each other and therefore need a careful evaluation to be diagnosed separately the cholangiocarcinoma also shows a strong desmoplastic reaction desmoplastic reaction means there is extensive fibrosis in the stroma which is due to the deposition of collagen as you can see here these are the fibrotic strands within the stroma moreover there are extensive mitotic bodies moreover focal necrosis can also be seen in the malignancy the tumor presents with the atypical symptoms such as pain abdomen specifically in the right hypochondrium there might be jaundice which is due to obstruction to the bile duct and as with all the carcinomas there is a history of weight loss as well the tumor is diagnosed in the late age due to its silent growth and cholangiocarcinoma typically has a very poor prognosis with the survival rate of only less than 15% for up to 2 years the examination reveals an abdominal mass on the palpation and these tumors also metastasize via blood vessels and lymphatic tissues perineural spread is also common in cholangiocarcinoma the most common sites for metastases include lungs vertebra brain and lymph nodes the tumor might also sometimes metastasize to adrenal glands radiological investigations such as MRI and contrast enhanced CT scan are done to determine the extent of tumor and also to determine the metastatic lesions. The definite diagnosis is based on the histological report of biopsy. So this brings us to the end of discussion about cholangiocarcinoma. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.